Very good evening to everyone and welcome to ICFI's Wise Views Interactive Webinar Series. This is the 20th webinar that we are organizing on the platform, which started about five months ago. We are extremely happy to have all the leaders sharing their wise views and enriching us and our audience with a lot of takeaways. Today, we have a very distinguished entrepreneur couple with us, Mr. C.K. Kumravel and Mrs. K. Veena, uh, founders of Naturals Beauty Salon, which is revolutionizing this country and making it more beautiful. Their efforts are quite laudable and their story is something very interesting for us to listen to. I request all of you for having uh, waited with patience. Please mute your mics and without any possibility for a disturbance, let us call in and welcome uh, Mr. Kumaravel to start. But before that, let me have a brief introduction which I can share with you. This is a couple, uh, I met them several times, uh, especially during the India Today conclaves around the country. They used to participate with a lot of uh, keenness and uh, they used to make their statements, question and participate in the proceedings. And uh, I had the good fortune of uh, 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 sharing my views with them and, uh, and I can call myself a little bit of a friend of Mr. Kumaravel. Thank you, sir, once again, and uh, thanks for joining us. The agenda is uh, 30 minutes of uh, initial talk by the couple. I think, I think it will be started by Mr. Kumaravel now. And uh, after that talk, we will have a question and answer, which is going to be moderated by myself and my esteemed colleague, Professor R. Prasad, who has joined. Uh, this interesting couple uh, have uh, launched a natural salon, as I mentioned. Uh, they are the founders, which is now a leading uh, salon. They have changed the face of salon industry, which was considered to be a taboo activity. Uh, they launched in 2000, and now it has become a lifestyle industry. The long-term goal of the couple is to make Naturals number one salon. Their vision is to create thousands of successful women entrepreneurs, 10,000 salons, 50,000 jobs within the end, by end of 2025 across the globe. Inspired by his mother, by Mr. Kumarvel's mother, Srimati R.C. Hemlata Garu, Mr. Kumarvel believes in the women power and is now on a mission to create a housewife-free India. This is very, very interesting. Not only this is interesting, but the fact is that they have already created and launched over 700 uh, salons across the country in about 92 cities. And they have empowered many women to become entrepreneurs and also created several thousands of jobs for the beauty salon professionals across the country. My own personal experience and the feedback from general customers is that Natural Salon is amazing and uh, their service quality standards are superb. So I'm sure this feedback will go a long way and help the brand strengthen itself. Today, we will hear from the founder how they are facing the challenges that have come owing to uh, the pandemic. Pandemic has affected everyone. I'm sure it has affected the salon industry also. With this brief introduction, I stop sharing and now I invite Mr. Kumravel to start his talk. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, my friend Sudhakar, and the, for giving us an opportunity to be a part of this Vice Talk series. I think it's wonderful work um, and a privilege to be a part of this 20th uh, um, member of this uh, um, uh, see, webinar series. My respects to the professor and also to all the members. My apologies for joining late. And let me quickly get into this. Uh, the um, It all began, uh, the seed for this is uh, sown by my father. I am from a small town called Kadalur near Pondicherry in a large, um, uh, what do you call, middle class family. My father is the uh, first entrepreneur I saw in my life, obviously. And his primary business is to buy pharma products in bulk and put it in small packets and distribute to medical shops. Along the way, he is a very curious person, very innovative person. He always looking for new ideas and new opportunities. And one day he was traveling to Singapore to attend an exhibition. Fortunately for us and unfortunately for him, there is a Tata bottle shampoo he was carrying in his suitcase. It, it, it broke and soiled his entire dress. Instead of blaming the Tata bottle maker, 
or the suitcase maker he said hey here is a problem can i fix it and convert to an opportunity and that's called entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is not about an mba degree it is not about having lakhs of money in your bank account it is not about a tata birla surname it is about your ability to think different can you look at a problem and say here is an opportunity then you are ready for an entrepreneurship my father told that uh, um, uh, my father um, um, uh, bought pharma products in bulk and put it in small packets he said hey why not i also may uh, put shampoo in small packets he made his own um, uh, machine he packed his own um, um, made his own formulation and packed india's first sachet shampoo and called it velvet last decade india today came out with an article about 50 revolutions which changed in india after independence and my father sashe innovation was number 8 in that that was one of the most gratifying moments for us he said something very interesting he said what a rich person is able to enjoy the poor person should be able to afford that was his thought process for packing the um, um, uh, shampoo and then that's how the sashe revolution um, um, started that that's where our journey began and second thing is um, um, sudhakar was talking about my mother i have to go back to the memory lane and um, connect that thought um, uh, this happened some 42 years before um, um, 12th september 1979 and my father died and um, i was 13 year old then my uh, eldest brother was 25 year old and there were four siblings in between we were total six of us next day morning my mother called all six of us and told from today i am going to be your father and mother as a 13 year old kid i did not even get, get a grasp of what she is trying to say all i could understand is the family is in some kind of problem but for the next 35 years she did exactly that she played the role of father and mother to us and ensured not only all the six children are safe but also successful she ran the agriculture she ran a factory she ran a school she ran a bakery she ran a tailoring unit she danced she sang and she lived a complete life and that was the first time for my close encounter to see what a woman is capable of if she decides to take the life in her hand and what kind of life she can build for herself for her family and at the world at large and that's the my my first this thing i got the second um, um, point which which is very um, uh, crucial happened to me when i was in college i um, uh, uh, joined the psg arts college in coimbatore and um, i used to um, we used to belong to a group of students who will go to the college daily and not go to the class one day we were idling and having a cup of coffee in the canteen a friend of mine called and told, um, uh, a friend of mine told that there is a guy called ms uday murthy he is come and speaking in the auditorium why not we go and listen to him i said okay uh, we are idling let's see what this uday murthy is up to i walked into the auditorium and i realized it happened to be a gandhi jayanti day as a young kid i was not a big fan of gandhi i thought gandhi was the reason for india pakistan partition had india and pakistan were to be together this wasi makram and, and sachin tendulkar will play cricket together and we can win the world cup i was not interested in this hindu muslim unity or india pakistan unity etc i was only thinking what can i do to make the indian cricket team to win the world cup i presumed gandhi was the reason for partition so i did not like him obviously this uday murthy was talking about gandhi only he said how do we indians celebrate the gandhi jayanti day we put the indian national flag on our chest hoist the indian national flag distribute sweets and chocolates say mere bharat mahan jai hind and after that we all go home and watch tv that is the indian way of celebrating the gandhi jayanti day we think he is a mahatma and we are an ordinary atma there is no connection between us excepting in 2000 rupees and 500 rupees notes he said there is a gandhi portrait in american parliament washington dc and below that portrait it is not written mk gandhi 1869 to 1948 it is not written mahatma gandhi father of the nation india it is written a single man can make a difference look at how americans are looking at gandhi and drawing inspiration and how are we looking at gandhi and distancing ourselves there lies an answer for us and that is the one line i got from my college and that one line is enough to live my life 
I am not asking you to put Gandhi picture. I am asking you to put your picture. And below that, write, one man can make a difference. One woman can make a difference. And, and that's the, um, um, uh, um, and start watching your picture daily. Soon your life will become legendary. You know why? Our mind is made up of conscious mind and subconscious mind. Conscious mind is one eighth. Subconscious mind is seven eighth. Conscious mind is, this is a man, this is a woman, this is blue color, this is green color, this is a car, this is a bike. That's called conscious mind in action. Subconscious mind is, we all, what we took today, today morning, what we, we all did, we took, we, we, um, we took the brush, put the paste and started brushing. We don't even have to think which hand to hold the brush, how much paste to take and how long to brush. Because today brushing has become a subconscious activity. What we do again and again and again will become a subconscious activity. What we think again and again will become a subconscious activity. What we uh, see again and again will become a subconscious activity. That is why when you, when you put your picture and below that write a one man can make a difference and one woman can make a difference and watch that daily, you will activate your subconscious mind and soon a legendary life will emerge. If when you have more time, don't miss Gandhi's wonderful autobiography. My experiment with truth, it can change lives. So that's my, how my college life began. After that, I, I joined my two brothers. My eldest brother is Dr. C.K. Rajkumar of Velvet. And my youngest brother is C.K. Ranganathan of Scavin Care. I was a young, restless kid. I used to get, go every day and give uh, new, new ideas. Instead of dismissing the idea, they will dismiss me. They will tell you are too young. And I used to feel very claustrophobic. And in life, you have got two choices. You can discuss or you can decide. People who discuss don't decide. And people who decide don't discuss. People who discuss don't decide. And people who decide don't discuss. I decided to start my own business. And I got one lesson from both my brothers. One brother was harsh. Another brother is nice. But the lesson is same. If you want to be successful in life and business, be unreasonable. Be unreasonable. A reasonable man adopts himself to the world. An unreasonable man makes the world adopt to him. So all the progress in this world is made by unreasonable people. Period. Rain fills the sides of the vessel you carry. Keep a spoon outside, rain will fill a spoon. A tumbler outside, a bucket outside, a river outside, a ocean outside. What is the size of your dream? Do you want to make lakh of rupees a month? Do you want to make five lakh a month? Do you want to give job to hundred people? Do you want to be the best in, the st in your state? Or do you want to be the number one in your field in the country? Or do you want to leave your mark in this world? What is your size of your dream? It takes as much time and energy to lead an ordinary life as it takes to lead an extraordinary life. There is a beautiful scene in, scene in the movie called Pursuit of Happiness. In that the father, Will Smith, will get a basketball gift to his son. Next day morning, the father and the son will get into the basketball court. This young kid will dribble and try to shoot the ball. The ball will not get into the basket. The father will scream, Hey boy, don't try to shoot now. You need to grow. Wait, you, you can't shoot now. And that's what he will scream. And he will try to walk out of the court. And this young kid will again dribble. And this time he will throw the ball. The ball will get into the basket. The father will come into the court and put his arm around the shoulder and tell this little boy, just because the world thinks they cannot, they will tell you, you cannot. If you have a dream, go ahead and shoot it. Do not listen to this world. It takes as much time and energy to lead an ordinary life as it takes to lead an extraordinary life. That's the me message I got from my two brothers. After that, I started my own company and, and the company and I launched a product called Raga Herbal Powder. And the product after three years of super success and the next three years, it became a super failure. And that is when me and my wife, Veena, were, were discussing of what to do and how to take forward and life and my life and business was completely doomed. I was, I was at um, uh, a crossroads and again, I had uh, two choices. Um, uh, my mother told my young, um, younger brother, C.K. Ranganathan, who was doing very well at that point of time, Kevin Care was, was reigning. And my mother spoke to my brother and told that you join the company and you work with your brother, your brother will take care of you. I said, no, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be on my own. In life, you, you have got two choices. You can, you can have a um, comfortable life or you can have an exciting life. I decided I want to have an exciting life. 
and that is the beginning of the brand naturals the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their own dreams as long as your hair grows our business grows it's a 30000 crore industry um 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 organized industry is half the, half the size um it is growing at 25% a year uh, there are around 2 lakh beauty parlors in this country and there are around 10 lakh people who are directly employed in this business these are some some of the statistics i know today but way ba- back in 2000 when me and my wife veena started this business we did not know any of the above all we wanted to do is to get veena self employed and make 60000 rupees a month and that is the target we had at that point of time um, well, um so we started looking at at what to do one of the biggest challenge every entrepreneur faces in the beginning is to identify what to do irritation is the biggest source of energy if you are irritated about something look them over very carefully there lies an opportunity we were irritated about a lack of a good quality affordable salon at that point of time good quality salon was available only in five star hotels which were intimidating and unaffordable on other end of the spectrum we had the local beauty parlor and bar- barber shops whose hygiene standards quality of the product quality of the people were very poor to say the least we as a customer could not fit into both we thought there is a need for a good quality affordable salon that was the idea we got at that point of time that was the problem we wanted to we wanted to solve um, um, so that is the problem we we wanted to solve second um, challenge every entrepreneur faces faces is where do i find the skill a um, lot of people think that the you if you have to do a business you should you should know the skill of that uh, business only then you should you should know actually um, um, people who are not from that industry alone can disrupt that industry people who are in the industry can only make incremental progress people who are coming from outside the industry can only really disrupt it for example the tesla car what is elon musk is able to do till such time people believed that there is a need for a engine for a car and the tesla car elon musk come, came in and he completely um, uh, what do you call disrupted the the car industry and that's how it has begun dhoni our own um, um, cricket captain um, uh, india's fa- favorite cricket cricketer was first a football player he was not a, he was he was a goalkeeper and that is how his, his life began but after that when he in- entered cricket he went on to play helicopter shot and then he went on to captain india and take the indian cricket team to the great heights even the uh, steve jobs was not a original owner of the mobile phone industry who oh, mobile phone those time were dominated by um, nokia uh, blackberry and motorola they were the companies who were the mobile phone experts but when steve jobs came into the market with a touch phone and a smartphone the, the market completely disrupted it and that's how we could take the business of apple to such great heights so we are from not from this industry and this that is the that is the um, um, second skill um, 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 where do i find the skill uh, veena is not a beautician she is not a hairdresser she is not a makeup artist and my knowledge of beauty is even poor i thought manicure is for feet and pedicure is for hand with such a poor knowledge we hired somebody who was heading the taj salon and she in turn hired the rest of the people and we started doing the project work and the third and the most important challenge every first generation entrepreneur faces is where do i find the money i favoritely call the three f's which is the friends family and fools i collected the money from these three f's put them together started the salon in kadarnavaskan road with the hope that veena is going to become self employed and i am going to make 60000 rupees a month i was half right veena became self employed but 60000 rupees is not happening in life and business first 3 years are very difficult and the next 3 years are difficult first year i made a business of 20 lakh and made a loss of 10 lakh second year i made a business of 30 lakh and made a loss of 5 lakh third year i made a business of 40 lakh and made a loss of 2 lakh all my friends and well wishers told no 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 you are not lucky business won't come to you you don't have um, uh, b positive blood group and all this blah 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 they were saying you said they were not lucky i said no i define luck very differently l u c k laboring under correct knowledge if you labor under correct knowledge invariably you will be successful and that's exactly what has happened i told them my turnover is going up my profit is coming down i see a light at the end of the tunnel let me sustain for one more year 
and i continued the business and that's exactly was what has happened fourth year i started making 50000 rupees every month which is 6 lakh profit and and then i i opened my second salon and then 50000 rupees became 1 lakh and 1 lakh became 2 lakh more than 2 lakh money lost its charm because there is no um, uh, legal way to spend more than 2 lakhs in india after that i went and met my auditor and prepared a project report i wanted to open three more salons somebody at that point of time is having five salons in chennai i said i want to be chennai's number one salon that means i should have six salons i made a project report and went and met the banker and i told i want 60 lakh to start my next three salons banker told no 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 a beauty parlor means 3 lakh should be the project cost 2 lakh is what the bank will fund 1 lakh is what you are supposed to bring 20 lakh and 30 lakh for a beauty parlor it is unviable it will not be profitable we will not be able to be able to fund that's what the banker banker told but for me no means um, uh, for, um, i am a jack canfield student um, jack canfield is the author who wrote the book called the chicken soup for the soul in one of the chapter in his favorite favorite book success principles he will talk about yes w yes w yes w yes w it means some will some won't so what someone's waiting i kept on knocking the door the 10 the 20 the 30 the 40 the 50 51 52 53 54 finally the 54th banker said yes i will give you the loan of 60 lakh and he said yes for a very very what you call um, casual reason or or not um, it will appear very um, um, surface but he is very um, sensible he he found a, 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 an insight which a normal person will not be able to find he said a husband and wife doing business together that means i will bet on you you will repay and that was the only reason he didn't so much look into the project he only looked at our face he looked at the husband and wife and he said i will sanction you 60 lakh loan just like that and that's how we got the 60 lakh loan and started the next three salons with the money generated we opened the next salon 6 year into business six salons and life was bliss and but i am a growth addict my role model is anita radik anita radik is the owner of the body shop international and um, um, uh, um, we went me and veena went to london um, in the late 90s and we wanted to bring body shop to india and she showed us around that um, her, her factory her, her office etc and she told that um, um, india is not ready and she also told um, uh, you are not ready but meeting anita radik and seeing her facilities uh, she has been such a great inspiration for us not realizing um, um, the few years later i am going to use lot of her technique into franchising and um, i wanted to do franchising and she um, we put a big advertisement in enadu and in um, um, hindu paper in uh, english and we put a big advertisement wanted franchises um, 440 people applied for that i got the form what i got from anita radik adopted to um, um, uh, salon industry and sent it to this 440 people and finally i got a reply from 33 people and um, we tried to that was my first shocker i tried to connect with this 33 people three of them were serious finally three became zero way back in 2007 nobody was interested to join naturals because this industry is considered to be a taboo industry 30 lakh is too much for a beauty parlor um, ckk and veena are husband and wife they are not a multinational company they cannot be trusted with such large money that is what the the market thought at that point of time but for me no mean i am used to disappointment i am used to i am used to failure i am used to struggle for me no means next it is a next person or a next idea i came out with a next idea the idea is i will invest 50% you invest 50% i spoke to my first set of friends and relatives and told them i will invest 50% you invest 50% i will do all the startup work after that you do all the day to day running we can share the business 50 50 and that idea they liked it next year the 6 became 13 the year after that the 13 became 27 next year it became 58 after that it became 110 190 270 310 390 460 540 610 610 and as i speak in front of you we are just touching 700 salons and we are going to open our 700th salon of this month and that is where we have reached at this point of time and uh, along the way we became india's number one salon chain we became started making lot of money and we, we started receiving lot of awards reserved for this category 
and um, 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 we appointed Janelia as our um, uh, brand ambassador. Janelia is a um, was our road number three Banjara Hills customer, and she we we appointed as our brand ambassador. Now Karina Kapoor is our brand ambassador. All those things along along the way happened, but but what gives me immense satisfaction is not the um, um, money what we make, not the awards what we receive, not the number one status what we have got. Um, what gives me immense satisfaction is uh, uh, so far we have created 400 plus financially independent women entrepreneurs. So far we have created um, 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 10,000 plus direct jobs. For me, these two are significant um, achievement by naturals. I have a dream. My dream is to erase the word called housewife from the Indian dictionary. I have a goal. My goal is to create 1,000 successful women entrepreneurs, 3,000 salons, and 50,000 jobs by 31st December, 2025. I realized if I have to make my dream come true, I need a lot of money. As I told you before, I'm from a small town called Kadalore in a large middle-class family. And um, where talking about money, where talking about money making, becoming rich is usually considered to be taboo. And um, ours is a very large family where I, where, as I told, we are six siblings and a lot of friends and relatives. Today, we live in a society where if, uh, Husband and wife live together. It is called a joint family. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a very serious problem of the Indian middle class. The Indian middle class thinks the rich are arrogant. The Indian middle class thinks the rich are bad. The Indian middle class thinks the rich will exploit the poor. The Indian middle class thinks to desire to become rich is wrong. That is the unsaid word in the Indian middle class. And I was a victim of that. That is when I met my teacher, Mahatriya. He told me, Every good human being has the moral responsibility to be rich. Every good human being has the moral responsibility to be rich. If the good people do not desire to become, become rich, money will go in the hands of bad people and the bad people will use that and destroy good people. So in your own selfish interest, desire to become rich. It is not the action of the bad people which destroy the society. It is the inaction of the good people. Money is beautiful. Money gives you choice. Money gives you choice of what dress to wear. Money gives you choice of what car to buy. Money gives you choice of where you can put your children to school. Money gives you choice of where you can get hospitalized when you're sick. Money is beautiful, but money is not everything. Money is like a fuel to your car. It is neither the journey nor the destination. It is just a part of the transportation system. Don't chase money, make money chase you. Money is a byproduct of providing a good service or a good product. It is not a main product by itself, excepting for Reserve Bank of India. Love money, use people, you got it wrong. Love people, use money, you got it right. Once I got that money mindset, my business started exploding. And that is when we started really building business from strength to strength. I want to share an anecdote which is very special to me, which happened when I opened my eighth salon, my first salon outside Chennai. It happened in Coimbatore. I partnered with my um, cousin and I used to go there every month, be there with, as a part of the salon operation for five to six days every month. One day he introduced me to a elderly woman and, and two young girls. They, they, he sold this family used to spend 5,000 rupees every month. This has, was somewhere near 2008 and 5,000 rupees those time were very big money. I said, thank you very much for your patronage. Um, and uh, they told, um, I told, and she said, I am coming from Karur. And I am coming to Coimbatore, three hour drive, three hour up and down, three hour up, three hour down. And I'm coming twice a month, only for naturals. I, am, I want to open a salon in Karur, she told. Remember, I told Anita Radik told India is not ready and you are not ready. I have to give it to somebody else. I told ma'am, Karur is not ready. But she said, do a market survey and then tell Karur is ready. Put Karur, she told. And before we could do a survey, she identified a place. She invited me. To I like to the place and she invited me to her house. As I walked into her house, I, I realized I, I saw there is one BMW on the left hand side, a Mercedes Benz on the right hand side, and few more small cars. I told myself, why is this family wanting to open a natural salon? Anyway, I went and inside and met uh, um, um, her husband, two sons, two daughter in laws, um, and, I, and I told to myself, 30 lakh loss also will not affect this family. Chalo, let us open. I opened the salon. One year later, she called me and she said, thank you. 
I said, for what, ma'am? She said, I made 50,000 rupees profit this month. I said, good, ma'am, you can make up to 2 lakh and it will be um, very useful for you. That is the wrong sentence I used. And she said, sir, I don't have any money problem. My house at any point of time will have 10 lakhs in cash, jewelry and document extra. But for any money I spend, I have to give accounts to my husband and to my two sons. This is my money. I can spend the way in which I want. I said, you have made my day. The best fashion statement you can make is standing on your own legs. If there is a woman in your house, in the name of mother, in the name of sister, in the name of daughter, in the name of wife, who is not contributing to the financial kitty of this family, don't blame the prime minister. Don't blame the policy maker. Don't blame your astrology chart. Don't blame your um, uh, what you call financial situation. Charity begins at home. It's your responsibility to make that woman financially independent. There are so many talented women, so many potential, so many dreams, sleeping between the four walls. And that channel, and that woman, and that potential. When I saw my mother as a, as a young widow, six children, and she could have given up on life, but she took the life in her hand, and rest is called history. And same thing happened with my body called Anita Roddick. Same thing happened with my wife, Veena. At every point of time, I see women to be extremely talented, extreme potential, but they lack self-belief. And I was also going through such a problem in, in, the, in the beginning. And I, 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 I used to really work hard. I used to really struggle. I used to really read a lot of things, but I did not have the courage to put up my hand and ask for my position. And I, life used to go, go, keep going like that. And that is when I came out with that one line which changed my life, which is, I am responsible for my own life and my own success. And this hit me like, like a bullet. Till such time, I used to think my parents were responsible, my um, spouse is responsible, my relatives are responsible, my teacher is responsible, my uncle, my neighbors are responsible, my friends are responsible, my boss is responsible, my government is responsible, my astrology chart is responsible. When I started realizing I am responsible for my own life, my life started changing. I want to share an anecdote today um, um, on, in this um, uh, uh, regard. This happened in, um, in, in um, Florence city in Italy. There's a beautiful statue called David. And um, the world used to marvel at that statue. People used to look at all the visitors around the world, used to marvel at that statue. Go back 500 years before, um, there was a 18 feet long marble block and the museum officials called all the um, sculptors and uh, told them, can you do something with this marble block? Everybody looked at that marble and said, no, 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 including the famed Leonardo da Vinci. I believe he looked at that marble and told it is flawed and useless. And fast forward another 300 years, next to superstar of the sculpting industry came, who is the Michelangelo. And he looked at that marble and he said, okay, I will do something with that. And he started working on that marble with his hammer and chisel. And he started working on that. One guy came to Michelangelo and he asked, hey, what are you doing with this? You are hitting that stone. And Michelangelo told, there is an angel inside. I am trying to reveal that angel to this world. Within each one of us, there is an angel. Our, our life journey is to reveal that angel to this world. Even if the whole world believes in you, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody can help you. On the contrary, even if the whole world doesn't believe in you, if you start believing in yourself, nobody can stop you. Self-belief is the first and the final qualification. Quality of the painting is the responsibility of the painter. No blaming allowed. The quality of the sculpture is the responsibility of the sculptor. No blaming allowed. The quality of your life is your responsibility. Take that brush from this world and start painting your own picture. Soon a beautiful picture called your life will emerge. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with all these, my women franchise partners, my people around. They are extremely talented people. All they needed is a framework and a little bit of a, what you call, um, push in the beginning. After that, they create wonders. And that's how the Naturals Network is formed at this point of time. I am not saying Naturals Network is the only opportunity. All I am telling you is women are extremely capable, extremely talented. I, I, my, my firm view is women are foolish to pretend that they are equal to men. Actually, they are superior and they always have been. And that's my belief looking at um, Anita Roddick, looking at my mother, um, Hemalata. Incidentally, Hemalata is from Rajamandri, my mom. 
and my wife veena and so many talented women i see them and once they take life in their hand they become super powerhouse and they really build great life not only for them for their family and the world at large and that's what people who used to call me as an exponent of women entrepreneurship i'm a woman empowerment i am not i am a beneficiary of women entrepreneurship and that is when i want india may have got freedom in 1947 indians have not especially the indian women don't have financial independence my mission in life is to make get indian women financial independence because once women have got financial independence the family will change and not the society will change and the world at large will change and that's what i i always used to say live life king size um um um, um live life queen size um um together let us build a beautiful india thank you so much and best wishes amazing story sir thank you very much for this uh, unstoppable current of uh, anecdotes stories and the entire journey it's so interesting i must thank you for engaging us it's like a heavy rain on us although you came late and you batted like a star batsman hitting all the boundaries uh thank you very much uh, <clears throat> there are several takeaways while i summarize i want to welcome our vice chancellor professor mahendra reddy and our registrar uh dr vijay lakshmi who have joined and and several others from the five family who have joined to listen to your story sir uh the story began with the entrepreneurial mindset of your father and the grit and determination and self made personality of your mother and then your college has taught you several things that anecdote on mahatma gandhi and subsequently uh, how the world of your brothers have taught you and triggered you to push into Uh, being something on your own in spite of having a ready made business especially among two of your elder brothers however i think the so much of learning and so much of uh, uh, courage that you have mastered is because of uh, the innate drive that you have to become your own uh, master and you rightly have put that you are responsible for your life and no one else and i think everything else uh, follows from that and a great belief in women that women are more equal to uh, men they are actually much superior and their abilities their talent their determination as you have given beautiful examples of your mother to start with then uh, anita rodrigues and of course uh, vina madam i think several people who are part of your franchise system are also day in and day out living this dream and displaying the fact that they are very strong and they are able to live on their own legs the best fashion statement that anyone can make is by standing on their own feet thank you very much sir for this wonderful uh, lecture and i think it is very original and unique in your own style this is the way you speak to everyone when we meet you one on one and this is the way you speak on screen this is called being original this is called being very unique i really liked it and i'm sure all our members of the audience have also liked this thank you very much and now i hope uh, veena madam has joined we will now move to the question and answer sessions uh, i request uh, professor r prasad to come in at this point in time professor r prasad is uh, the architect of online mba program which we recently joined he is the director of academic wing at ifi group uh, he brings with himself a three decades of rich experience he was an entrepreneur before joining here so his corporate uh, work experience and his academic exposure all to put together including entrepreneurship is about 3 decades and i'm very happy to share with you that uh, professor r prasad uh, graduated from iit bombay and i am calcutta and presently he is the professor and mentor for online mba program welcome professor prasad and over to you thank you thank you professor sir uh, Good evening, yeah. Hi. Thank Hi. Good evening. Very nice to see you, ma'am, and most Thank welcome. You. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Kumarvel has made a lot of statements about women. I hope you heard. But now that you are here, we feel emboldened <laughs> that you will you will share your version of uh, the story of your entrepreneurial journey too. But we are beginning with the questions and answers, and I request Professor yeah. Prasad to start. Thank you, Professor Rao. Uh, uh, welcome uh, kumaravel sir and uh, ma'am it's a pleasure having you and for the first time you know in our series i've had 
someone who speaks so much about one's mind and you know how one can take charge of one's life and uh, and uh, produce results which were never expected when one started i think to that extent uh, the session is this presentation is uh, remarkable as well as the thoughts that you brought in from so many authors so many times i think that they all reverberate and uh, the key to this entire principle of entrepreneurship or for that matter any performance or be productive is basically it starts from the mind i think that's what you have been repeating in every 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 other nugget of wisdom that you have been sharing with us and thanks you thank you immensely sir uh, i have a better uh, professor to be um, what do you call um, um, such a privilege to be sharing and uh, my thoughts with you and and the entire team all are distinguished entrepreneurs and achievers it's it's an absolute pleasure to chat with you professor thank you sir i also take this opportunity to welcome our vice chancellor and registrar who have joined in and the registrar has already put in a lot of very very motivating uh, feedback and comments into the chat box uh, for self being a woman i think you know you, you have uh, you know grasped the essence and you have communicated it the feedback says that uh we have uh, a good number of questions so what we have tried to do is we have tried to make it into a, a story which you know kind of uh, builds into a, a case so some of that you have already answered but since ma'am was not there you know we we, we will also get her views on those questions uh so the first question uh, is essentially that you both of you hail from business families as i have read even ma'am also hails from a business family and uh, you have started many years back the question is basically about what are the lessons learned i can i can you know just sum up a few lessons that uh, kumarawel sir has mentioned that a single man can make a difference do again and again and your subconscious mind will adopt it as a habit um ordinary life and extraordinary life both need the same time and the same energy irritation is a great source of energy that's a wonderful statement um uh, labor under the correct knowledge you put a good acronym to that husband and wife together will repay uh, is an extremely good human insight and so on and so forth at this stage i'd also like to invite ma'am to share some lessons from uh, what she has been seeing in her earlier you know before she got married kumaravel sir because she hails from a business family as well as the journey till now some of the lessons that uh, you can bring to the table ma'am um okay so uh, before we started this uh yeah i was uh, uh i mean i was a housewife the children uh, started school and that's when i wanted to start something as you were saying and uh, basically wanted to start something small so uh, um, so when this came up we were only thinking of one saloon and how uh, and focus mainly on how to you know get this saloon going my uh, main interest was uh, using a lot of natural products so we wanted to give uh, you know quality service at affordable price so i used a lot of natural products and uh, that was my main interest so uh, so worked on it uh, the main focus was keeping the customers happy so we wanted the customers who came in to go back happy and come back again so we uh, basically focused mainly on uh, you know uh, on giving quality service and getting the customer back so um, that was uh, the initial this thing and later on uh my main uh, uh focus went on to training and uh, uh you know uh, innovating giving new services because this industry people keep wanting uh you know new new uh, services and this thing so we kept working a lot on that so uh, you need to keep innovating to stay uh, you know up front in this so uh my focus mainly was on those lines and uh, when it became a franchise model uh so uh so from my side when he wanted to franchise i was a little apprehensive about it because uh since i was very passionate about giving good good services and you know i was wondering if uh, a partner or a franchisee would do the same thing i mean you know whether the quality would be maintained so i was very hesitant about it in the beginning but we will have to be you know running about four or five salons so uh, so that's how when we started for uh, you know franchising i realized that yes maybe if we had to grow that is what we had to do and today yeah uh, i mean we can see how it has worked out so uh, so those were the few learnings and now uh, at every phase i think we learning something uh, new we have uh, today to maintain the 
the standards of the saloon is our focus see that all the saloons give uniform quality service so uh, so the focus now is on that and uh, we see how uh, how we can get our franchises to work towards that so yeah thank you ma'am thank you ma'am those are some very basic principles that you have enunciated with respect to the business that you are in and some uh, lessons for those who are listening in uh, the next question is uh, you know about the title itself from a caterpillar to a butterfly and uh, can you explain the evolution metamorphosis uh, of course sir has given a lot of again in his uh, in his uh, presentation many of the yeah. points which answer this uh, uh, question have already come in uh, so uh, the the different perspective that ma'am has is one thing that we are looking at and the other thing is that uh, uh, what are the ideological insights practical methods to overcome and bounce back from challenges of course sir has mentioned many nuggets from books and also about uh, matreya uh, the lessons from there but then from your perspective and of course sir is most welcome to add to more than what is said but uh, what would be your uh, points in this uh, metamorphosis from a caterpillar to butterfly how how what has life taught you during that and how have you stood the the tough test that you have undergone in this particular period mm, yeah as he uh, also mentioned that uh, we were very new to this uh, industry i mean uh, uh, we had no clue of how this industry runs all that we've done is earlier visited a saloon and we know what services to expect so uh, that was the basis of uh, our understanding of the saloon industry but along the way we learned we learned and today uh, we've brought in so many changes that as leaders we we uh, redefined the industry is what i say so uh, uh, to look at uh, uh, done along the way uh, is my uh, this could be i think he kk has to add to it i'm sure he can say something thank you ma'am thank you so oh, in the beginning um, uh, we thought that uh, vina will manage three salon and i will manage three salon is how we looked at it and then we realized uh, uh, individuals don't scale it is only systems and process will scale in the beginning it can be the passion of the entrepreneurs it can be all the what they call the drive the need to make money all those things will really motivate you in the beginning but if you have to a uh, uh, move forward it is that systems and process and that what is required to scale the business that's our uh, key learning and that's how we changed ourselves first we were working in the business and then we became um, the franchisees started working in the business we started working on the business that is shutter up shutter down keeping the salon clean whether everybody is coming is customer happy is the products available all those little little details are taken care by the franchise partners while we started working on how to build the brand image how to expand the network how to introduce new services and those are what we call on the business work we started doing and that is when why i fondly call it as 1 plus 1 equal to is not 2 1 plus 1 equal to 11 they took care of the half of the business and we took care of the other half and that's when we could really speed up i always used to say that ideas are the currencies of the 21st century and speed is the another currency of the 21st century and we need to today it has to be idea plus speed has to work it is an idea anyone can come out with a brilliant idea but people who put the idea to action is actually priceless and to that all my franchise partners each one of them is playing such an important role in making this brand shine and that's in my mind especially during this corona time it is my franchise partners who stood the time so many women um entrepreneurs because this corona our industry is one of the worst affected business and i have to say thank you to each one and how much ever i say thanks it won't be sufficient thank you sir there are a lot of uh, insights out there uh, in the business on the business we have heard it from you know one of the other entrepreneurs in hyderabad and i think is on the business the process and the systems that is also a great insight and uh, uh, the that speed and execution matters after the idea that is also a great insight thank you sir uh, the next query is about uh, uh, how did you choose the brand name naturals <laughs> what are I... the core values it communicates and uh, how has it evolved over the years in your experience i was a big fan of natural ice cream in bombay i used to go to bombay during my velvet days and i used to what do you call the people used to say shahrukh khan and juhi chawla 
used to come to that natural ice cream shop and used to I, I used to go there and have that coconut ice cream ginger ice cream all those very natural flavored ice cream i used to be a big fan so that is when i like to give name natural then veena worked on that idea and actually made lot of fresh fruit facial vegetable facial dry fruit facial like that we started using lot of natural product which is more uh, home made uh, uh, what do you call um, um, say, um, uh, remedy or the or the beauty secrets have been formalized and she put that as a um, uh, differentiator and the name and the um, uh, this thing fitted in so well and that became uh, gave us that first advantage wonderful wonderful i think you you have also brought in this idea about you know of innovation where you take it from somewhere else and then you adapt it and make it very very suitable for your context i think that that's a very very yeah. wonderful example have a favorite um, um, what do you call the framework called the cci which is copy customize and innovate anything good happening outside copy it then customize it to your industry and your at uh, the quantum where you are at the textually and then innovate it so cci is helping me helped me and helping me thank you again i think you know a lot of things which are already done in the world and which i think the cci formula is extremely useful and i think steve jobs also backed that so the next question is slightly uh, philosophical uh, you know hul last year we named fair and lovely as glow and lovely they said it was part of the evolution of the inclusive vision of beauty you have talked about beauty of your own dreams in some of the interviews that you have given yeah now what is the conception of the word beauty in in in, in your philosophy because i believe it will influence the way you run the venture and how has it influenced your business beauty is uh, it's about self confidence it is about the passion it is about that uh, that uh, that extra energy what everyone brings it to the table it is not how you look how uh, what you call it is not about your um, hair and uh, or, or your skin that is that is uh, external it will be there for some time and it will keep mo- moving off but real beauty is your passion it is your self confidence it's it's uh, in, in the your your uh, urge to make a difference i think this in my mind is is i would call it as the real beauty i am able to connect it to the building of the entrepreneurs and i think what you're essentially saying all along the way is that how you build your people is how the product will also come out and there the the passion the energy and the self confidence all of them do come thanks a lot thanks a lot uh, we come to the end of this cluster and i uh, hand it back to professor sudhakar rao to handle the next cluster thank you very much uh, professor prasad i think this is going on and on in an amazing way uh, nobody can stop this it's like a hurricane i think several takeaways are coming our way uh, the next cluster of questions is focused on franchising partnerships or business partnerships that you have done I- i'm sure in uh, beauty salon industry the way forward or the methodology that you have adopted is through franchising now what is the model how do you select a potential woman franchisee uh, can any any thoughts on that sir so simply put franchising is using other people's time and money but the real equation is using other people's time and money responsibly when you add the word responsibility to, to the equation the fra- equation gains power the franchisor comes with the brand name and the business knowledge the franchisee comes with the local knowledge and day to day operations and there has to be enough margin to share between both the players if these three parameters are met the business is intrinsically franchisable first we need to check tick that all the three box that is very important if you tick that and they, then you have got a, a franchisable business how you select a franchise partner i have one very simple but very powerful um, 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 what do you call framework um, whoever you will invite to your home for dinner or whoever house you will go for dinner they can be your partners this covers multitude of territories their income group their what do you call i what do you call educational qualification their culture what do you call the these subject of interest all those things only when it is common you will you will part you will go home and enjoy a dinner and same thing is when i select a partner i select 1 2 3 4 and that's how the uh, the i put um, uh, the framework and i also say that you, uh, we have taken a very um, um, parental approach towards franchising and that's one of our U- usp a parent will never allow his child son or daughter to fail 
so we have taken a parental approach towards franchising so we will not allow it's our responsibility to make our son or daughter to be successful and um, i have one an anecdote which is uh, I want to share we have a, a, a this thing which is um, lsd of franchising um, i call it l stands for lakshmi s stands for saraswati and d stands for durga any any activity l we do should either make money to the franchisee or save money to the franchise partner that is l yes is there has to be some amount of learning money making itself by itself is not an end there has to be they also have to evolve as a human being they also have to evolve as an entrepreneur they also evolve as a businessman business woman that's very important and how to handle there are six stake, stakeholders if on of any business first the stakeholder is the customer second stakeholder is the um, uh, employees third stakeholder is the vendor fourth stakeholder is the um, uh, bank the financial institutions fifth, fifth stakeholder is the government agencies and the sixth stakeholder is the partners now there is a seventh stakeholder which has come which is the society in form of corona all the seven stakeholders are very important and the order is also very important starting from customer the employee to the vendor to the financial institution to the government agencies to the partners to the society and if one wheel is with more air another wheel is flat the journey won't be comfortable the role of the entrepreneur is to ensure that all the parame all these seven stakeholders interest is balanced and in the beginning i used to really take care of customer and employees and not pay the vendor in time and then later i i used to um, what do you call delay on the um, bank payment and the government agency payment but today i realize no 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 that is not a right way to go go in, do in business all the seven stakeholder has to be balanced and that is when you can really in, in what do you call go through a smooth smooth ride in life long cut is the shortcut and that's how what i have i have learned in life I, earlier i used to take lot of shortcut lot of shortcut lot of shortcut but finally i will go again in circle 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 and in the life long cut is the shortcut and that's what i have learned i mean uh, that, that that's a very very important uh, running notes i am making ma'am i have a big question to you sir talks like this at home also <laughs> <laughs> that you should ask him not as much <laughs> so there's a lot of punch in what he talks and, and there's a as a great speed at which he handles these queries so Uh, I am amazed at uh, the way you are responding, uh, Mr. Kumar Vijay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. The next question is: Mother is from Rajmandri, which is a very important uh, uh, data point that we have gathered today. We are very happy about it. I am sure naturals is established even in small towns. Uh, according to my knowledge, the large format. a uh, saloon establishment not just for naturals but even for others for lakme or for anybody else also is the the cost of franchising would 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 call for an investment of about 60 lakhs and the small one could be around 40 lakhs and of course there are latest models which you we will talk about which has gone even to 25 lakhs sir what are the principal difficulties that you have encountered when identifying and establishing these franchise units in small towns especially actually the the challenge is not so much in the small town for two reasons one the customer there are already very aspirational he or she is seeing the same television same actor same cricket player same what do you call the the what do you call social media has now reached its nooks and corners the aspiration level of the smaller town is also very high and they also are educated in engineering colleges and so many of these things so um, the one is the aspiration level already there is a demand latent demand available in smaller towns second is uh, um, uh, what do you call the competition is very very less so when we started in lot of small towns people used to come so far i used to go to only chennai to go to naturals i am glad you have come to my town i used to go to bangalore to go to naturals i used to go to hyderabad but now that you have come so the people used to be really thankful and they used to flock at that salon three for whatever the i really don't know the 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 spending capability of the smaller town people are far more than um, the uh, people in the city maybe because of less choice they have i really don't know why but my i am inter interpreting in the manner in which i like it so i think the 
the reason may be that the 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 smaller town people have got few choice and they're fully utilize it so that's what i think i am a big fan of small town i am a big fan of rural india and i am a big fan of young india amazing sir so the next question is about how do you build competency among these professionals the stylists and the makeup artists in order to achieve consistency in order to achieve uh, some kind of assurance that you can guarantee and build your brand on so how do you build this competencies the first is you should uh, give them some uh, pride to them i i will share one anecdote which is very very close to my heart this happened a year and a half before i wanted to have a quick shave before i wanted to attend a um, what you call a, a meeting in the morning i walked into one of my salon the receptionist did not recognize me so i felt half happy and half sad so second i went inside the first person also did not recognize me this time i felt even more sad and then i went in the second person i said sir come please come i said okay maybe he recognized me uh, treating me as a customer or as this thing anyway i said i went and sat in this chair and he said are you ck kumar avel i said abba thank god yes yes i told so he told i was wanting to come and thank you for a long time i thought maybe my franchise partner has given him some increment or some special training i asked him for what he said i am in this industry for 14 years first to four years with my father my father was called a barber i was called a hairdresser then i joined the natural ten year before i became hair stylist then i became a um, style director now i am the salon director of the um, uh, salon the way in which i start looking at me has changed the way in which the family starts looking at me has changed the way in which the society looks at me has changed so that is when i realized unknowingly i have i have touched a taboo industry and made it into a lifestyle activity earlier only one caste people we used to do in this activity today the caste barrier has gone because it is commercially viable it has become lifestyle lot of people from everywhere has joined and that's we saw we built a beautiful india and that's what i i always used to say coming back to your question is uh, two things the first thing we did was we call our service provider as called as smile providers because their job is to put smile in the customer's face first we need to give pride to them about the work what they are doing i think that is the first thing what we have done and that has made a huge difference to them second one we always believe that train hard work easy so the training section what you call um, 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 center in the back in the back end is actually the 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 heart of the um, um, naturals so how much ever people get trained in the back um, back end and that is what will go into the front end so we we train our people and that is what is the difference what we are able to bring it to the and and that's what is making the difference great sir amazing uh, the ability to call your uh, uh, service providers as smile providers is an amazing thing by putting pride on the kind of work that they do that's a great take away sir sir <clears throat> uh, the whole industry is pretty large for example you belong to the beauty and wellness industry which is pretty huge beauty products is one sub segment in that beauty and wellness services is another segment then you have fitness as another segment and the final one is alternative alternate therapies or rejuvenation so these are four broad segments so you can correct me if i'm wrong out of that what you have done in naturals is you have your own products you have naturals pro you have uh, naturals 1000 and then i have seen few other wonderfully made films where your own products are uh, merchandised and they are they are sold within your own uh, salons and you also have tied up with l'oreal l'oreal you have tied up recently with nike so uh, what are your collaboration plans for building these products and what is your product strategy how much of revenue does this product portfolio give to you the corona has uh, really taught of uh, taught us lot of things before corona we were actually go running very fast we were not um, focusing on the adjacent opportunities which were around us uh, corona has come and put a what you call kind of a stop and we started looking where all is the additional opportunity for us the um, alvin toffler says so nicely he says the illiterates of the 21st century are not the ones who cannot read and write the illiterates of the 21st century are the ones who cannot learn unlearn and relearn and corona is the best time for learning new skills 
unlearning lot of certain things which we need to unlearn and relearning certain things and when we looked at around us and we saw that hey finally we have lot of staff who are trained to sell who got a good rapport with the customers who got trust established trust with the customer the retail shelf which is rental is already available paid can we use that retail shelf like a typical um, um, what do you call a beauty product or a, or a conventional retailer who who measures every square feet and what kind of business turnover is bringing can we look at like that we are customer is there their time is also there and rapport is also there why not we start focusing on that that is when we started focusing on the retail and we not only told the customer anything curated product on beauty it need not be natural salon it can be vela it can be l'oreal it can be from nika anyone can we should collaborate today is not a, a time for competition today is a time for collaboration yesterday's competitor will become today collaborators and that is how the the market will move forward and we are a big fan of this collaboration and that is when we are talking to a lot of people come and display the product our staff will be able to sell the product and that's exactly what we are doing we are so far we are at 10 to 15% is our retail business we want it to go up to 30 to 40% of our business we want to come from retail that means all the what do you call the the working cost which is the rent salary electricity should be should be met by selling retail product margin alone should take care of all these expenses then the business becomes far more viable and that's how we are looking at it and i feel that in the next one year or so we'll be reaching there great lessons there uh, great lessons and the, with lots of guts i think you are pursuing this game amazing sir one last question in this segment before i hand it over to professor uh, prasam on one hand the large number of uh, franchises that you have is a big challenge in terms of maintaining the balance and the uniformity in terms of uh, the quality hygiene uh, the desired behavior of all the people that is on one hand but on the other hand it is not that you are the first one who have entered this business you have a 70 year old brand lakme on one hand which you have to compete with and then you have a new age company called urban company who are actually not getting into these services but they are they are they are, they are aggregators of all these uh, professionals they make commissions and uh, they take orders and then and that's their business model how do you compete between these two spectrum uh, this is entire spectrum <laughs> on one side i said when we opened our first salon lakme used to be a 130 salon uh, chain i used to marvel at that brand i used to wow what a brand national brand 130 stores and today if i look back they are at not even our half the size that's where i say rain fills the size of the vessel you carry keep a spoon outside rain will fill a spoon a tumbler outside a bucket outside a river outside a ocean outside so we saw india after 2000 is a completely different animal india before 2000 is a different animal the young india the aspirational india the first salary of the um, daughter is more than the last salary of the father these are all new india which has come and their the what do you call their um, 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 uh, lifestyle spending has really come a long way they have started spending money on mattresses they have started spending money on uh, cars they have started buying um, apartments all these are all the new india what the india what uh, azim prem ji and narayana murthy and the likes have created before that um, 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 the india was completely different so to this new india we started um, 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 putting our product and that is what in, in my mind as a, as a brand we have really took advantage of that changing face of the india and again india after 2020 is going to be a new india it is going to be a tech india so and that is where we are working on few products which is all very technology oriented my son vibhav he is on the job he is working on two three product which is very technology oriented they understand we are immigrants to the technology they are the natives they understand how the technology works but coming back to um, um, uh, urban urban company i am not a big fan of uh, 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 urban company in the beauty sector because beauty is an experience um, and that can be provided only in a salon because so many equipment so and so many gadgets it's a kind of a pampering today you want to see a movie only a theater will give you the theater experience um, the television only will give you a netflix kind of thing it can only give a partial thing 
and in a salon business it is even more hair coloring or it can be um, what do you call um, um, the lighting so what is there a pedicure ba basin what is required all those things is only a, um, a salon will be able to provide a hair straightening services all these services definitely uh, this thing and people also how long will they they will keep on one and a half year they people are now raring to come out of the um, uh, home and they are really i i could see in the last one month the business picking up like nobody's business um, i think the um, um, we have also tried it's not that we have not tried that home service um, it is not a unit economics one of the problem with all these funded company is there is no unit economics in that it is all they are go, dry, going behind the gmv i am not a, i am still um, old school um, um, fashioned in that i want the unit economies to work i want the franchise partners to make money and that is how i i really want to create well whereas the new age company they have a different metric to measure um, i am not a fan but having said that uh, i think my son and daughter will disrupt them amazing confidence sir i think uh, the you have new age people to handle the new age businesses over there while you are continuing to beautify the changing face of india madam one quick question before i hand it over to professor prasad that is in terms of handling such a large business before your son and daughter enters this what is the roles of responsibility between both of you madam and sir so he is the sales person he is the marketing person and expansion i handle uh, uh, the, the training and uh, new products and services uh, basically and uh, now we've opened an academy so uh, Uh, makeup academy school of, uh, natural school of makeup so that's the focus now wow the entire yeah. delivery of the brand promise it is your responsibility and making the brand promise is sir's responsibility okay thank you ma'am thanks for this input uh, professor prasad please start the next pair cluster questions thank you thank you professor rao i think you know as it is unfurling and in the last uh, cluster it is increasingly evident like the the responses to the question are more right brained and intuitive and i think somewhere in the interview i've read that you know uh, sir sir thought that he is intuitive and i think that's that's uh, you know that's coming from all the catch phrases from the many books and sources that have been read so there's a off the shelf question sir and this is you know if you have to recommend uh, four or five top books for uh, people who want to get into business to read which is not business which a lot of which references that you have been using which are those top four or five books that you would recommend seven habits of highly effective people my all time great stephen covey's they i love that anecdote which he Absolutely. he adds in that book which is um, on a monday morning i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to a office and suddenly one call came and the call is not a good call it's actually a bad call uh, which says one of my dear friend is no more i is not in the mood to go to the um, office i take a u turn go to his house and um, standing on the corner of the house in the center of the hall his body is placed i used to, um, i used to think of lord all the good time we we spent together and um, like that um, uh, thinking of those and suddenly i want to have a uh, um, what do you call uh, a closer look at that my friend i go there and bend down and uh, uh, suddenly i realize it is not my friend it is me four people are going to speak one is my from my um, um, from my family second is my from my friends third is from my office colleagues and fourth is from the society what do you want the four people to say of you if you can write in one one page for each of that that is now you know what is your end date and now connect the dates between from here to there that one one anecdote completely changed me and i and i i share it with a lot of um, um, thing i think they begin with the end in mind um, um, be proactive um, um, put first things friend uh, first think win win uh, first seek to understand then to be understood um, uh, synergize sharpen your saws these uh, seven habits what steven covey puts in his seven habits of highly effective people is one of my favorite not this kind of these habits and these thoughts are available in uh, bhagavad gita it is available in dhammapada it is available in holy, holy bible it is available in uh, quran 
um, all those things it is available but no one has sequenced private victory and the um, 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 public victory in a manner in which stephen covey has sequenced so my all time great book is stephen covey's seven habits of highly effective people second one which is a very this thing is as a man thinks by uh, james allen um, such a small book and such a powerful book i have not come across a, a small dynamite like an as a man think by james allen then rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki has completely changed the way in which we used to look at the finance what is an asset and what is a liability and how we need to what do you call um, uh, look at the the uh, the re- rich dad poor dad book has completely changed my my uh, style and way of thinking that will be my uh, next this thing then think and grow rich by napoleon hill i think that the title only says everything i don't even have to give any explanation think and grow rich i think that's that's my one of my um, all time favorite book i can say and uh, magic of thinking big by david schwartz when i was very young that that big thinking i got from that um, uh, this thing i am not a earlier i was a tamil medium student i didn't tell you that i cannot read english i cannot speak english much in a younger age but um, um, my father told one line which changed my life and that line is business success and english are related and that's what he told after that i used to read some hindu paper only sports page and little little things used to buy books from the platform 50 rupees books how to win friends and influence people think and grow rich one of my all time favorite book but tamil medium boy cannot grasp much that is when i got into this audio learning habit and that one habit is what has really changed my life and i got one cassette and put it into this walkman and started listening and uh, suddenly i started understanding little 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 i converted all my down time to into up time the beauty of audio is you can convert all your down time to up time my down time is my waiting time my driving time my walking time has all become a learning time for reading a book you should have a like good atmosphere lighting should be good nobody should be disturbing and only then you can read a book whereas for an audio the driving time you all keep on listening to air rahman music and ilai raja music we keep on listening to them only their life will change our life won't change if you want our life to change we need to convert down time into up time that thing happened for me in that audio i strongly recommend to you today wonderful audible is there and um, what do you call um, 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 uh, audio app is there lot of um, 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 uh, youtube videos so many things are available we have now information overload we need to select the right information and focus on that so at that age i may if you if i have to single out one thing which really really helped me is that formal education will make you survive in life continuous education will make you a fortune if you want to earn more learn more and that's that's my this thing thank you sir i think you have moved far beyond think and speak english and uh, read and speak english you are actually thinking english i think it's fully in your dna you know the way you 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 are you know your the barrage the, the what what the professor sudhakar rao was talking about you know the, the rain the relentless rain it's there it's there in your thought process i think it's come into your dna and i think that that's what is coming across uh, pretty clearly thank you sir the other thing which i found very interesting and which is very useful to us is this uh, tier 3 small town cities because we also when we do our analytics you know we thought that you know we we keep, keep this thing that first we have to target the big ones then we have to target this, the next ones but i think you, there are a lot of insights in what you said about you know the the real india and the aspiration and i think that's something that we'll take away for what we do as an organization and it, what we do for the online fb uh, thank you sir that is also an insight sir thank you uh, there are a lot of questions we are already at 8 8 so Uh, uh professor sudhakar rao how do we do i am not in a hurry sir i come late so i have uh, fantastic as... sir fantastic uh, fantastic mr kumarvel is not in a hurry he is a hurricane himself <laughs> sir uh, uh professor prasad you want to finish the uh, module that you are handling or yeah yeah i'll do that i'll do that yeah thank you uh, uh Uh, the first uh, question here sir is in the next cluster basically about entrepreneurial strategies and uh, uh, you have entered dubai and uh, you had plans for uh, opening in the us also uh, how do you see the growth model in the coming 5 years perhaps the pandemic has you know reorganized your plans how do you see the 
you know, how do you see the growth model in the coming five years, and what kind of opportunities do you see in that? So one of my 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 dream is to make the naturals as the number one salon chain of the world. A um, lot of times, Indian brands restrict themselves because we are a we are not willing to we keep uh, um, our formula our uh, operation method as a secret. Um, there is no secret. There is no secret in life. There is no business secret. Um, only that's I as I told individuals don't scale. It is only systems and process will scale. And why should a Starbucks, which is in America, should come to India and sell coffee here? We Indian, we don't make good coffee. We make wonderful coffee. There are there are wonderful coffee chains, whether it is a Sarona Bhavan down in Chennai or uh, the uh, Chutneys in Hyderabad. I cannot. I can keep on naming the num wonderful food product. What India, the kind of cuisine, the 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 range, the taste, variety. Wow, India is awesome in that. But the problem is we are not ready to put systems and process. We are not ready to share, and that is the difference. Uh, American looks at everything as a, um, systems and process scalable and world as a market. We look at as business secret only me myself, my family, and my seventh generation only should use that money. I think there we should very marvel at Americans. The Western society is ready to share with the world, ready to take it to great heights. And also, there, I am a big fan of them because they want to really, um, um, they um, even um, Bill Gates, Warren Buffet, and the um, the, the greats are really um, um, donating for the larger good of the world. Whereas, um, barring um, um, uh, Vipro Azim Premji, I am not seeing such a large heart in Indians. Maybe I really don't know. Maybe we have a, a scarcity mindset, or maybe we have a uh, uh, coming coming from poverty mindset, I really don't know. But I am a big fan of the Westerners on, on, on the process and this thing. But I want Indian brands to really look at the world market. And um, once you put our site there, and the rest will be called history. I am making, I made a new product called Naturals Ayur, which is a combination of uh, salon and Ayurvedic wellness center. I am not treating disease. It is not an illness center. When I becomes um, um, uh, when um, uh, I becomes we illness becomes wellness. So I am in in wellness business, and in that wellness business, natural Ayur is the game, and we have tied up with Kerala Ayurvedic Pharmacy, in 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 combination with them, we we have that is what is the product we want to take to the international international market. There are enough of Indian diaspora who is uh, available across the world, and they have become far more wealthy. They are looking for Indian product. They are ready to support that, and the presence there will also help us to fine tune and raise our standard in the local market. So it will be a very very win win deal, and that's what how we want to spread to the rest of the world. But our focus is 140 crore ka Indian here. Um, we are today we are um, we call our pride ourselves as Southern Wonder. The opportunity is to make a national wonder. India can take 10,000 salons. And that is the number we want to get in there. Thank you, sir. I think that itself is a, is a you know, is, is quite, quite a big dream. And I think I'm sure you have many more up your sleeve. Uh, yeah, the world will, will conspire with me and make the dream come true. You all will help me. Thank you, thank you. I think there is there is absolute, uh, you know, uh, what I would call clarity and genuinity in what you speak, and and it comes out very very clearly. Uh, the next question, sir, is about, uh, uh, you have mentioned somewhere about entrepreneurs being uh, freedom fighters and uh, women entrepreneurship is seen as a potential solution of employment as well. In fact, a Bain report in 2019 uh, says that as of now, only 25% of enterprises are women enterprises. And that too, the employment there is about uh, two. I mean, the average employment per enterprise is about two. And what they say is that this figure can move up from uh, from about 12 million to 30 million by about 2030, and that uh, this can provide uh, about you know uh, 15 odd million jobs in terms of what its employment uh, no 60 million jobs that is you know about five times the number of enterprises it can provide. So there is a national lead for women entrepreneurship. Apart from the general cry for entrepreneurship that is there in Startup India, etc., etc., there is a national need for women entrepreneurship. 
what in your view are the key things which need to be done in order to the first question the entrepreneurs are the new age freedom fighters who will pull india from the shackles of poverty these are nine i took from ck prahlad it is the business at the bottom of the pyramid in his last lecture before his death he spoke about what is the india's problem and what is the potential solution for 350 years the mohals and the britishers have looted us and for the next 74 years it is the turn of our local people there are four indias the first india is what i call the power india where there is a government ministers the bureaucrats the middlemen are there the name will change and the game will continue the second india is what i call the poor india more than 50 crores of our mera bharat mahan is living in subhuman condition they don't have basics they don't have basic health care they don't have basic education they don't have basic shelter they don't even have basic toilet but the power india and the poor india are in nexus the power india wants to keep the poor india poor and the poor india wants some handout some wa- waivers and what actually what the poor india requires is education and employment which the power india is not in a mood to give because once they get educated and they get employed these people have to move away which brings me to the third india where most of us belong to it is the what i call as the new rising middle class our parents may not have led a great life great lifestyle but because of the technology and because of the globalization we have started living a great lifestyle aircraft travel five star hotel international travel what you call the holidaying are all now part and parcel of our lives but we are i me myself society because we are coming from scarcity mindset first time we are seeing little money and we don't know how to really come out of this which brings me to the fourth india which i call is the entrepreneurial india entrepreneurship is your ability to use minimum resource and achieve big dreams and that is entrepreneurship so this entrepreneur who can think out of the box will align with the third india and come to power india to give solution to the poor india because entrepreneurs alone can create jobs what the poor india now requires is jobs and that is why i call entrepreneurs as the new age freedom fighters who will pull india from the shackles of poverty we all it is not the violence of the bad people which destroy the society it is the silence of the good people politics is not a bad place it is filled by bad people because good people are staying away and that is what is my this thing on the so new age freedom fighter bit the second one you were you were um, um, talking about um, um i'm i'm sorry i forgot the women entrepreneurs and what do you think in a few things which can take us on that oh, i think swami vivekananda said so beautifully society is like a bird men and women are its two wings the bird cannot fly with one wing and um, um, but unfortunately there is a huge resistance from women before in the pre independence era there the, when you go to your grandmother there used to be 8 to 10 children and then they used to take care of the cooking then they used to take care of the household uh, domestic chores then the some, what do you call in that uh, farming agriculture the first sapling is the responsibility of the women after that they will make butter milk and that butter milk they will sell and with that money they will make a kasamala which is the gold uh, round round gold around the neck and that much women were very uh, um, uh, what do you call um, 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 financially prudent and uh, they used to participate in everything that much was women power to a two generation before slowly steadily the patriarchal you know, this thing has taken over and told women you be at home etc etc and made women make them self doubt of themselves and um, i believe um, I, i i i i i i think authorities and responsibilities are never given it has it has to be taken and in india women are not ready to take the authorities and responsibilities the first thing they should realize their potential when a person is sleeping when the house is on fire all we have to do is wake up that person the person will find their own way of coming out of the house i think today all we need to is a society what we should do is we should make women realize their potential and we should make tell them hey you are a super power if you are able to tell that they themselves will find the answer and that's what my this thing to the thing we don't have to specifically give lot of things to them they are intrinsically very talented and intrinsically very disciplined 
intrinsically very focused and they can make miracles thanks a lot sir you given two insights first is you know the the great thinker ck pralad and you, and you are kind of manifesting the execution of his vision or you you have laid out how what he said can be made practical and i think that that's very 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 realistic uh, and it also solves that uh, age old problem that we have between the number 1 and the number 2 which we see a lot around us Uh, the other thing is the very simple message and the starting message which sets the fire which is awaken women i think this, these are the two things that we take back thanks a lot sir i hand it back to professor uh, sudhakar rao for the next cluster last cluster thank you uh, <clears throat> sir in your website it is mentioned that uh, you don't have to do further marketing probably that's a statement to your franchisees who takes care of marketing and how it is done and what works best for the industry according to you the marketing is something what i love from the uh, from the younger age i don't know i have some some kind of certain words gives us um, the 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 rush the younger age it was marketing advertising then it was innovation and then it is franchising these are the words i really love and now it is collaboration um, um these are some some things which is very close to my heart um and i take care of the marketing marketing is in my my ability to uh, put the customer first very simple identify um, ask the customer what do you want and then work around that uh, um, thing is is how i how i look at it and um, that's one of my 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 really really passion in working on the marketing great ma'am uh, you are the closest to the customer and you are closest to the people who serve those customers from your perspective what are the insights and how those insights are converted into action for mr kumarvel to manifest that into marketing and marketing activities or probably even collaborative activities um i am uh, services and uh, uh, products uh, i mean i don't understand how exactly you uh, the question clearly actually yes yes the question is uh, since you are closest to the customer uh, i'm sure you are observing a lot of insights feedback uh, their yes. objections if any or their acceptance which is more often happening how do you gather these things and convert that into uh, uh, an action actionable uh, insight yeah so uh, we have a team basically uh, so they are able to collect the information the customer feedback uh, and we have customer feedback coming in through now digitally yes customer feedback comes to us directly so this is passed on and also the customer requirement uh, at the floor at the saloon level we have franchisees also who connect with the customers to understand what services they require so a lot of new services that are introduced is from what the customer wants what is there and so that is passed on which is what uh, we project these offers and uh, this uh, you know uh, new in in inaugural services that we offer and then festival services that are offer comes from the customer as to what they require and then it's passed on to them basically from the uh, smile providers because they are at the flow so they uh, collect information and then it is uh, passed on to the area manager and he reaches it to us great it's a it's a well structured uh, mechanism that you have to to take the customer requirements convert that into insight and then put it into action amazing ma'am thank you very much you you said you have the training academy and you take care of the training uh, activities as well now the products and services that naturals is offering is transforming the personality on one hand on the other hand the education focuses on the perfection that is already lying in a human being now how do we develop these ethos to focus on what is going to be the best contribution to the society how does training academy bring out that best ethos to contribute best so uh basically uh, these people are the ones who go and serve the customers so we work on improving their skills uh, and uh, constantly work on that so we have a good team uh, today uh, we have uh, experts from the various fields uh, from uh, to come and uh, teach and take uh, regular uh, classes for them so this is done constantly and uh, we definitely have a lot of brand support uh, so they also uh, contribute to upskilling our uh, 
you know staff as well as uh, 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 students constantly so vina has said a very important point which is the support what we receive from the uh, brands which is the l'oreal vela um, um, uh, the schwarzkopf and the likes of the brand these brands are having an international experience and they deal with variety of uh, um, um, the salon chains across the country and also across the globe uh, they will come and teach us and uh, uh, share with us what is their learning from them and mm-hmm. that will really help us to spot the trend and connect the dots and uh, keep moving forward amazing sir thank you very much uh, for that input uh, sir we are now coming to uh, the end of this conversation and it's a pretty long session and we've thoroughly enjoyed it uh, i'm saying this because i might forget uh, saying these things towards the end whereas you have an amazing memory you will never forget anything so uh, the question is the newly targeted home services segment how is it shaping up uh, uh, vis-a-vis the saloon segment which you already have because this is a requirement which is compelled by uh, the pandemic and we need to survive and stay afloat so i'm sure you spoke in one of the interviews in media about home services segment also not just with naturals but for the entire industry how is it evolving no it, it is a mixed bag i should say that um, we tried ourselves it has not worked well for us then we tr- we try we partnered with house joy because they will get us the order and we will do the servicing even that has not worked really well for us and now we are in the in the process of uh, um, re rejigging itself because any order which is less than 500 rupees it is not making unit economics for us though travel time the uh, the staff cost and the, the staff to um 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 uh, come, uh, cost of travel time for travel all those put together any service which is less than 500 rupees is commercially not viable for any of the stakeholder i feel if a, if an, as i told i am i am little from the old school i wanted to make money for all the stakeholders if i rob and um, paul peter i cannot be able to do that on a continuous basis and um, uh, moreover um, um after the pandemic in the last one month we are in touch with the people who have taken home service um, um more than 70% of the people are ready to come to the salon only people who cannot come to the salon either because of the old age or they have not vaccinated or because of pregnant and some uh, um, nursing mothers etc only require salon at um, uh, services at home by and large the regular people who are stepping out of home are preparing home services what is our understanding i feel that uh, more and more we um, uh, do that the home service market will will um, uh, be only a niche market it cannot um, it will not disrupt the mainstream business great sir great thank you uh, very much for that i have another question short answer questions uh, the vyomo which you have uh, acquired uh, from yuraj singh it has not done well i understand any any comments on that sir no the, i think the, the that's what that was our first failure in mm-hmm. in, in the um, home service business uh, thing we thought that um, uh, people will adopt when especially instead of taking a service from a unknown person if a, a brand who is an expert in that field if they come and serve the people at this uh, at their home i thought lot of people will take we even gave discount because most of these home service people are also very discount oriented people so the the online companies have trained the customer the online custom uh, um, uh, companies have trained the customer to expect more they are more than 70% of them are discount my, my, uh, oriented customers so it has not really worked for us uh, but anyway um, it's a, a life we have to keep on giving feedback in different different things um, one of the thing i i really pride of ourselves we have made more mistakes than anybody else in this field that is our biggest advantage and um, um, more mistakes you do more correction and more learnings and more correction life keeps on giving you feedback feedback is the breakfast of champions you need to convert that feedback and see what works what doesn't work and you have to take forward and that's exactly what we are uh, done with vmo we are very happy about that failure we have we have it, it has given us lot of insight of what will work and what will not work in a home service 
Great, sir. Thank you very much for that brilliant answer. Madam, one question to you. Uh, do you think these robots and robotics will uh, actually disrupt this saloon industry? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because uh, I don't think robots can be perfect in cutting hair um, you know, or doing uh, services where here it is more the touch. So I don't think they will fill in that. Uh, there are uh, uh, apps which where you can, you know, uh, see what kind of a hairstyle can suit you, what color will suit you, what kind of makeup you can wear. But uh, it has to be done by a person to give the results that we want. I don't think a robot will be able to work on that. Great. great. Artificial intelligence will, will help a lot in, in, in what you call in making design. ourselves more efficient. But finally, the work has to be done by the person. We have seen a lot of that um, uh, massage chairs, massage this, massage that, OSIM, lot of in the airport you will mm -hmm. be able to see. But finally, what people like is the touch and feel of the massage. I think our business is a touch and feel uh, is this thing. AI will help a lot in making ourselves more efficient, understanding the customers, the challenges, and the ability to chatbot with the people and uh, things like that. But finally, I, I think the service... Be, will be given by the customer uh, world over. Great, sir. It's a high touch industry and at every touch point, there is some data and there is some insight for ensuring that your services and products and professionalism will bring them back again and again to natural salons. Thank you very much for this wonderful session, sir. We as an education institution, we would like to ask you one last question. In the initial narration of your story, you said that you belong to a batch which goes to the college, but never in the class. How do we manage that, sir? How do we make sure that those people who are in the canteen or in the playground are brought into the class? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I used to tell that, uh, I used to tell that um, the college is, is a place not only to make them academically uh, brilliant. Um, it, is a, it should be a place for... Uh, um, uh, um, our curriculum, generally our curriculum tests only our memory skills. It doesn't test our creativity and it doesn't test our imagination. The curriculum should be made in such a way that it is engaging the people imaginatively and, and, and training them in their creativity. College teaches language. It doesn't teach us communication. College teaches uh, physics. It doesn't teach teamwork. College teaches chemistry. It doesn't teach goal setting. College teaches uh, mathematics. It doesn't teach financial intelligence. College teaches geography. It doesn't teach you how to travel. College teaches history. It doesn't teach you how to become a leader. I think a lot of life skill is what the colleges should be focusing so that it excites the, what you call a person to come there and learn from there, not only the memory skills. And apart from that, I feel um, 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 sports, uh, uh, music, uh, um, uh, dancing, lot of co-curricular activities, extracurricular activity. Um, I, I tell all the students, identify your plus one in the college. College is a place to identify your plus one. Your plus one may be anything other than, yes, you should study well. But apart from that, it's a great opportunity to identify your plus one. You can be a great team player. All those things you can only learn in college. You can fail also, no problem. You can learn some new sports, new this thing. I think that is what is the students should be looking at as identifying their plus one. The, um, the curriculum, the makers, the teachers, the management should be looking at more as imagination and creativity. How are you going to inculcate as a part of the curriculum? Then it will excite a lot of people. Amazing, sir. I think that is a fantastic way to end this session on a high gestalt. The way you have explained what colleges and society should look at and place their importance on. Both of you, Mr. Comerville and Mrs. Veena, you are working very hard and struggling and enjoying the journey in beautifying this country in your own way. Beauty is not skin deep. You're also developing very strong individuals. And more importantly, you are empowering women and turning them into women entrepreneurs, which this country needs. May God bless you. And we all thank you on behalf of ICFI Group for spending your valuable time and sharing these insights with each one of us. We thoroughly enjoyed listening to you throughout this session 
and I'm sure you have the energy to go on and on, but we need to make it as a part one and we'll come back to you for part two uh, <laughs> some other times. In spite of your busy schedule, you logged in and uh, you have made our day. I can't thank you enough. So ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through a fantastic session on behalf of all of you also, I have thanked the wonderful guests today we have with us, Mrs. Veena and Mr. Kumravel for enlightening us and sharing these nuggets of wisdom in terms of how to become a very energetic entrepreneur in whatever you do. And I think it is not just your blood group which is be positive, but everything else in the way you do, I think entire DNA is be positive. We have learned a lot of lessons and we also have to uh, actually catch up in the way you speak and the way you uh, deliver your important lessons. It is very difficult to write down, so I left it to the video recording. I will go over the video recording like most of my colleagues will do and then pick up some insights and probably share it on our website. We keep all the archives, both in terms of video recording as well as a beautifully drafted summary of all these insights so that it is a readily available knowledge for all of us to go through, pick up our insights and put it into action. Professor Prasad, thank you very much. Professor Mahindra Reddy, Professor Vijay Lakshmi Garu and all the members who have joined today, thank you all. And I take leave of you and I also thank once again our esteemed guests for joining us. Thank you, thank you Sudhakar, my friend. Thank you, Professor Prasad. Thank you, thank you. I cannot thank um, M.S. Uday Murthy or Stephen Covey or any of my professors and teachers from whom I have learned so much. My only way of saying thank you to them is share the knowledge with the people. And you have given me a wonderful platform of some way in interesting entrepreneurs. And thank you so much for that. Hope you will again give me one more opportunity to share, meet you in person. So that will be even more fun. Looking forward to that. Together, let us build a beautiful India. Thank you so much. Best wishes. Yes, sir. Together, let us, build a, let us build a beautiful India. Ma'am, last words from Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful... Uh, it's a pleasure being there, uh, part of this. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the pandemic is not over. We need to continue to take our precautions and not invite or hasten the third wave which people are talking about. I think we should wear masks and maintain social distance and not get into the crowds. But we can get into national saloons and transform ourselves. This wonderful story of grit and determination has come to an end today in this part one session. And it is not just grit and determination, but it is in reality, the journey from a caterpillar to a butterfly, well told by our hurricane friend, Mr. C.K. Kovaravel. Thank you all. I take your leave. Good night.